my goodness, look at these guys. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, he looks so much cooler now. The amazing Alex and Ben have done it again, and they have managed to give our Nile crocodiles a tremendous facelift. I mean, face to tail to snout to toe lift. Oh my gosh, look at them. They look so cool now. They look properly like the tremendously powerful, absolutely amazing predators that I totally respect them as. I just realized we haven't finished this part of the Nile crocodile exhibit. So hello everyone, and welcome back to our beautiful savanna zone in Zoo Tycoon 2. And I need to go ahead and kind of add a few trees over here. And oh my goodness, you know what I just realized? You know what I just realized? We have our little like, um, our little overhang here, our little bridge so that people can look over and see what the oh my gosh look how cool that looks oh my goodness and there's color variants oh this is just fantastic they're so active all of the crocodiles i ever see in zoos or anywhere where there are crocodiles are usually basking they're usually just kind of spending their time oh look at him swim that is so cool splashing the tail really announcing this is my territory this is my home this is where i want to be oh my gosh that is so cool that is just so cool. Oh, and the coyotes are going wild. But I just realized we have no fencing on this Nile crocodile exhibit. Oh no, and where do you two think you're going? There's no escaping over here. I'm watching you. What are they trying to do? Nile crocodile four. Oh, they're just sleeping over here. Okay, that's fine. They want to, oh, no, no. Oh, hang on, ma'am. Hang on. I really do need to add in some fencing so that you don't like tumble to your death because Nile crocodiles do eat people. I think that's actually one of the things that has always fascinated me about these large predators is that they are man eaters because we're squishy flesh creatures that are delicious for large predators to kind of chow down on. We don't have hard claws, we don't have hooves, we don't really have anything threatening innately about the human body to be completely honest. Not when you compare yourself to a crocodile or some of the other man eaters like a shark or a cougar. You know, some of the big guys, like maybe a lion, Lion, lion might eat a person. I haven't heard about a case of lions eating people in a long time though. But yeah, if you, you look over those cases, we're, we're squishy, yummy little flesh sacks, which is really kind of the truth of it. And we're gonna scroll over here looking for some good railings. I'm thinking just a typical glass fence would be good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start it down here so people don't get any any smart alecky ideas about trying to wiggle into these enclosures. Oh yeah, that should be good. And we'll put some binoculars over here. Can I make the glass fence go down further? Because I don't want people trying to jump in. And some people do that in zoos too. Isn't that ridiculous? They'll try to like climb into the tiger exhibits and things like that, and then they're shocked when the tiger like kills them. These guys are predators and we really have to respect that. But yeah, there's, I think that's why crocodiles have always kind of amazed and impressed me because they are large predators. They could eat me if they wanted to. And about a uh, rough estimate what I, from what I was just reading, say that Nile crocodiles kill anywhere from 200 to 500 people a year going off of estimates. And that's really hard to prove because a lot of the places where people disappear are small villages that don't really have um, a lot in the way of sanitation because if they had an alternative to water, you know, some nice sanitary water uh, that comes from piping or plumbing, then of course they wouldn't be going next to the crocodile river, like crocodile infested river trying to eat from it. <gasps> what do you think, ma'am? What do you think? Oh my goodness, this is our first crocodile viewer. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see some animals. Oh, what if she needs, she just was looking at the road runners. Okay, so she needs to see some animals. Do I have any binoculars somewhere over here? What the heck is this? <gasps> Somebody just threw trash on the ground here. That is unacceptable. Oh my gosh, and someone's unhappy? What's going on over here? Why are you unhappy, ma'am? I can't find the bath, I really need to use the bathroom. Okay, so she can't find a bathroom. Okay, it looks like we need to take care of our, oh, I thought, ah, there we go. Looks like we need to take care of some of our guest needs. So let's go ahead. I think we could probably tuck another bathroom in right here and I'll move the tree. Yeah, we'll put a bathroom right here. But yeah, so uh, when I say that crocodiles are man eaters, a lot of people think, oh, they're super aggressive. They want to eat humans. No, they're opportunistic eaters. They will actually eat a lot of foods. When I was doing a little bit of preliminary research on them uh, before I sat down so we could add in our amazing looking new crocodiles, it was really interesting because bats came up on the list of foods that they're known to eat. Bats! 
I mean, how often does a crocodile living in the river, especially a Nile crocodile, which by the way is the second largest extant species, which means currently existing, currently living species of reptilian on the entire planet, second only to the saltwater crocodile. But how often does a Nile crocodile in its river come across a bat? But they have been recorded eating bats because they are apex predators, which means they're at the top of the food chain. They're like very important to their ecosystem for being able to pull down a whole bunch of prey items. And they're opportunistic and they'll eat cheetahs, hyenas, wild dogs, bats. They've even been recorded eating lions on occasion. So I thought that was very, very interesting. All right, let's go ahead. I'm just so excited about these Nile crocodiles. We need to make their exhibit a little nicer. And I was thinking today we could kind of mix in some of the other plants and maybe some more animals in here for them. Fish is another major part of their diet, just like it's a huge part of the diet for um, Nile crocodiles, actually. Let's put down, oh, we need some endangered species donation boxes over here. We're gonna make this area fancy because this is gonna lead over and I'm thinking we'll put in maybe some aardvarks and like some aardvarks over here and the African wild dogs over here maybe. So oh, I'm so excited. This is just so awesome. All right, let's get this done. Um, and then quick tip if you are decorating, oh, there we go. Got some benches coming up here. Oh, is this a little, oh, Ooh, it's a greater kudu. This is actually, this is actually a nice spot, a nice thing for over here. And let's just go ahead, put that maybe, no, let's put it in the middle of the path so people walk past it. And then take away some of the pathing under it. Very carefully. Not too much, but not too little. All right, let's, let's try again. <laughs> I'm going to try moving it a little bit closer. Uh, ooh, there we go. And we'll sell this one. There we go. And then let's see, we need to grab some decorative, there we go. This black thorn bush I've always loved decorating with. There we are. Now we're starting to look pretty good over here. All right, I'm gonna put down some black thorns over here. Looking good, looking good. There we go. But yeah, when people hear like man eater, they often assume like intentionally aggressive to humans and that's not the case you guys it's almost always opportunistic eaters they see you as a potential food source so they're going to try to give you a nibble and if they can get away with eating you they probably are going to and people are like that too if you can get away with eating something most people usually do it's just in much different settings all right there we go maybe some little blackthorn bushes down here just to kind of give us some very, very little train to look at. Oh, look at these crocodiles. Oh, they're so cool. All right, so this lady over here is actually going to need some more comforting things. She's gonna need some of these little safari benches to be able to sit and rest and being able to sit and rest while looking over the crocodile exhibits just sounds like a really awesome opportunity. And we should probably add some more benches over here. Uh, the bathroom actually would have been good over there too, but I think that spot's okay. Maybe we'll put some food over there because people are probably going to be hungry by now. Um, maybe a couple more benches here. We need some binoculars because I would love, I, you know, next time I go to the zoo, I'm just taking my binoculars. <laughs> I need to just take them because it would be so much fun to have them with me to be able to see all these cool guys. Uh, let's just use the paradise binoculars. Yeah, let's just go ahead and use the paradise binoculars and put them somewhere that doesn't interfere. We'll have to move the donation box, I think. Yeah, we'll move the donation box. There we go, come here you. Um, let's go ahead and scooch you. Let's just put you in, maybe move the safari bench or make it face a different direction. Darn, so many, so many options. Let's just go ahead and put it over here. And maybe put the safari bench over here. Donation box kind of more in the middle there. And let's look for a nice, a nice archway that we can put over there. The desert arch? No, I want the, do I have it out? Not the desert arch. There's kind of a more humble little arch. Or well, I guess this is the three, the three span arch. And that's why it's here. Okay. Hang on, we're gonna look for, there's like a twig arch that I wanna put in. And then let's see. 
After that, ooh, and actually a nice little zoo map. You know, you should make sure you have zoo maps kind of scattered around to help the guests orient themselves. By the time you get this far back into the zoo, there's a good chance you could feel a little bit lost. <laughs> so probably need to add a few of these, maybe a few of the desert lamp posts just to, just to sort of clarify where everything is. Oh, this is looking so nice. All right, oh, here we go. Now we're talking. We're kicking around with some of the little canopies, the exclusive canopies, and is there, where are my arches? Here's my arches, the safari arches. All right, there. So then we're gonna put a couple safari arches down for people to be able to walk under. And that's good because as they walk under the arches, that'll make them feel more encouraged. Um, here, I'm gonna actually put this one right here and sell this one. That'll make them feel more entertained. They gain amusement as they walk under the arches, so that should help there. And we've got binoculars, good, good, good. And let's see what she thinks about this area now. What do you think, ma'am? Can you still see the animals okay? Ah, oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. All right, well, she's thinking about that. Ooh, and another giraffe is going to give birth. We are just having baby giraffes born like left and right over there. Ooh, splashy water is bad. Bad splashy water. Ooh, I better stop. Oh dear. All right, what do you think? I can't wait to see some animals. Okay, but where are you going? Are you are you looking at them over here? Can you see the animals? All right, she's thinking about it. Where's she going now? All right, she's walking under stuff. We've got a lot of zebras. I think it's about time to separate our zebra herd. All right, where's she going? Is she gonna donate? Are you coming, whoops. <gasps> She's gonna donate, yay, she gave the zoo a donation. So our very first donation here. Oh, look at that. And she's thinking about the crocodiles. That is so cool. And now she's gonna go sit on a bench. But she, total donors won. Wait, we have zero, we have zero dollars. Does she put in like a candy wrapper or something? Ma'am. <laughs> Well, does she have no money? She has like $300. She like put a candy wrapper in there. I am so offended right now. Made it all nice and everything for her. She's got some great benches, everywhere to sit down. And then what does she go and do? She sticks a candy wrapper inside the donation box. That's rude, you guys. Don't do that. No candy wrappers in the donation box. All right, and then let's go ahead and put over some of these African daisies on the other side of the river. Kind of make it look nice. There we go. But we don't want to cover up too many areas because we do want to make sure that these guys have plenty of room to bask. Oh, and they need a bath apparently. So I might need to go in and give them a scrub. So going into the water, what would be good enrichment items for them? So let's go ahead and add in some fish items, perhaps. I'm also gonna put in more prey dummies. So a lot of the times when people will be attacked by the Nile crocodiles, it's either when they're swimming or when they are washing clothes. I have seen that a lot. People who go in to do laundry at the river will go to the river's edge with their clothes. They'll kind of get in the water. Or they'll be at the river's edge and they'll be scrubbing the clothes and trying to clean them. And then the crocodile, which is an ambush predator, which means they don't straight out rush at you and try to hunt you the way, say, a wolf would. They will just, like, wait and look like a log, hide under the water, keep an eye on you, and then when they think the timing is right, burst out with immense force and speed and clamp down their jaws and drag you into the water for a combination of just drowning or injury to try to get their food very dramatic too. I think that's the other thing that's always attracted me to them. If you guys are big on crocodiles, let me know because for some reason I've always just been so fascinated by them. I guess I'm just going to put in some common roaches, I think. Meaning the fish, not like the actual roaches. All right, how are they, these guys doing? Did you clean yourself? Yeah, they actually did clean themselves and they're just wandering around. Having a good time, gonna go drink some water. So they're drinking water from the river as well. So that's really good news. All right, and the coyote, what is going on? The coyote is just like never endless, like endless howling going on over here. <gasps> There's babies! When did this even happen? When did we get little coyote babies? I don't recall this. I don't recall being told we had adorable baby coyotes. And he is noisy little guy. Endless coyote howls. How many babies? Oh, there's two babies. At least. 
Coyote number one, when did this happen? When did we, how many babies are, are kicking around in here? Coyote number two, congratulations. Oh my gosh, they've got big old howls for tiny babies. Hi guys. Oh, you are a cutie, you know you're so cute. Yeah, they know they're so cute. Oh my gosh. Why are you adorable? All right, but that is why the coyotes are so noisy because there's baby coyotes. Oh, we have more people showing up over here. You know what, we, the tour wasn't bad. I find coyote one to be very impressive. Oh, that's so cool. The tour was okay, but it could have been better. How could it have been better? I wonder if we add some tour items. Is that what they need? Oh, look, and here's a baby mom and Arabian horse. Oh, they're so cute. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff going on in this park. Like it can't even keep up. All right, Nile Crocodiles, how you doing? Like I said, I do want to try to finish up their area. I just feel like it's a little bit... Uh, it's the river. The river looks too empty. There needs to be more stuff in the water. There needs to be... Because if you're an ambush predator, the, the darkness of the water is going to help you to hide and hopefully not, like, cover up too much of your... Um, too much of what you need to be able to see your own prey. But, you know, crocodiles have those special eyelids that go over their eyes that allow them to see through the water. Very cool. Let's go for uh, wetlands, maybe. You can say gamba grass actually would be something that you would find there. So there's gamba grass. We're going to add in some gamba grass. And we're going to have to be careful because, like I said, the reason I always get away from an area after I've started adding a bunch of stuff into the water is that the splashing water particles can crash your game. So be aware of that. That's serious little FYI trying to help you guys out. All right, let's see. See, doesn't that look better already? And I want to put in some fish and we're only going to put in one gender of fish because modded fish are immortal and they will continue to breed and breed and breed until you have like no room left. It's just terrible. That's kind of what killed our marine zoo, unfortunately. All right, there we go. And we're gonna get more things over here. Ooh, we need some more of these really cool bushes over here. Cause they just kind of fill in the corner pieces perfectly. Ooh, I'm even gonna stick one over here. Nice, look at that. All right, <gasps> what do you think? What do you think? I'm upset at the lack of trash cans. <sighs> well, at least they're enjoying the fruit cups. There's always that. All right, and are people having fun up here? Oh, there's a zookeeper up here. Uh, nobody else over here, but I'm sure we'll have more people looking at the Nile crocodiles in no time. So let's get far away from the, the evil splashing. And then I need to get more trash cans, apparently. So there's a sand cat drinking fountain. Um, let's see, there's a trash can. Ooh, we should probably put a safari music rock over there, too. So what if I sneak a music rock over here, maybe? So people can enjoy. They really love the music rocks. And then let's grab a trash can. It's always so fascinating to have to balance the needs of the animals in making these gorgeous exhibits with the practicality of the fact that we are still running an institution that needs the guest, like needs guests to come and like be there if, they, if we wanna see anything be successful. And I always feel like that's a really important lesson for people to learn because we can be very judgmental of zoos or institutions that have animals. And I honestly think we should be. You should always be held to the highest standards when it comes to animal welfare. But it's very important to remember that, yeah, there are some real financial constraints that can make it so hard to provide what you want. And so that's why when I go to a zoo, I really like to try if I have any extra dollars, you know, put them in a little donation thing. Because you just don't know what your contribution might do, how you might be able to directly help those animals. And it's good to do research on that, too. Because it's, you know, some of the zoos, not so great. Some of the zoos, amazing and do life-saving work for the animals. They educate so many people about the natural environment. But I could go on and on about that for quite a while. <gasps> All right. Cool. I can see really far with these binoculars. All right. It's the woman who was upset about the lack of trash cans. Well, now she's excited about life. So that's good. Should I put like a gift shop over here maybe? Or this gentleman's going to go on like the little tour. We need to spruce the tour up somehow. All right, so let's go ahead and I think we're about done really improving the Nile crocodile exhibit. So let's add in some of their little enrichment item fish. So where's the common roach? Roach, roach, oh yeah, did we finish researching it yet? There's the perch, oh there it is. All right, 
So you only want to add in three enrichment animals at a time, by the way, because any more than that, and it can freak them out. They'll say, oh, this place is so dirty. Why do I have to put up with this? Oh, is he going for the fish? Oh, that is so cool. Oh my goodness, you are so cool, crocodile. You are a cool crocodile. Oh, look at the fish. Oh, that's so cool. They look awesome down here. Oh, and look at this. Look at this crocodile. All right, where are you guys all going? Oh my gosh, there's so many fish over here too. All right, what do you think? What do you think? You've got you've got quite a few fish that you could be working with here. Hmm? They're really just crawling around, aren't they? What do you think? Oh, you're looking cool. Now, in the crocodile hierarchy, the top of the hierarchy... Oh, that is awesome! Oh, we're basking! When they open this, their mouth like this, it can help them to thermoregulate their body temperature. Oh, that's so cool. Alright, so we've got some little fish over there, and then let's see if we can add in a couple little fish over here. Having more animals in an exhibit can also make it uh, more popular. Let's see, bluegill? Um, Japanese perch, bullheads. I'm not familiar with what kind of fish we could potentially expect to see if we were over in a stickleback. If we, okay, apparently it's found mostly to snakeheads, um, catfish. I know different types of catfish can be found all over the place, but not Will's cat, catfish. We're just gonna have to kind of go with general fish and like, a perch, maybe. Alligator gar is kind of specific. Electric catfish. Let's just go with some good old bluegill. So we're just going to put in some male bluegill. And we'll put in a whole bunch of them so they can kind of school around a little bit. And swim around here. There we go. And provide a little bit more action in the rivers. And if the crocodiles happen to eat them, that is, oh, unfortunately, the fish's fate. But I'm really happy with this. This is this has turned out very nicely. I think that the crocodiles will be happy. The fish seem pretty darn content. And we'll just have to see how the two get along. And in the future, we will be adding in more exhibits over here. We need to check in on the coyotes because we should probably release the young adults who have grown up from the babies to the wild. We'll try to make our little tour a little bit more exciting. And I'm really, I'm looking forward now that we've finished the Nile Crocodile to come over here, to coming over here and starting to work on, like I said, maybe the anteater, maybe the aardvark. Maybe we'll start working on the, the deer or the dogs, the wild dogs, or, you know, the lions and everybody else. So thank you guys so much and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.